QR code is to pre-order the first issue. The QR code that's in the program that is also in the program. This is not that. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. This is that's the. This is to follow us on Instagram and the Venmo. So okay. it's not. Got it. Got it. Okay. So.
to Lonesome at the Jefferson Market Library. We are thrilled that you could be with us today. Um, this is a pre-launch of issue one, which is gonna come out in the spring. The programs on your seat have a private URL, QR code, to take you to purchase issue one. There is a promo code active for today only. Jefferson Market, all one word, 15% off. So do order the book. It'll be shipping in the spring. <coughs> Lonesome came to me in January. An impulse, a necessity, a need, a birthday gift from the other side, the underside, the underneath. We are a gathering point, a fulcrum, a hand that feeds. What a poet will tell you, what the old friend sees. We are wildflowers on the highway getting lost among the weeds. What magic have we mustered from what brought us to our knees? So the piece that was playing through the arrivals is Storm Picnic by Teresa Gans. It's a series of hurricanes and storms set to the first movements of Mozart's dissonance quartet that's been slowed down to a drum. It's by Teresa Gans. It's in the permanent collection of the RISD Museum, and we are thrilled that she could be here today with us. So I met our first reader tonight at a reading series called No Required Reading at Pete's Candy Store. Anthony Ray. It was such, such a moving piece, and I'm thrilled that we have it in Lonesome and that he's going to read it for us today. So without further ado, let me introduce Anthony Ray. Caskets 
and social constructions meant to protect the powers which oppress us. Our song and voice and behavior might become united in justice and liberty for all, where the milk and honey flows in abundance for anyone in need of nourishment. That's my problem. I imagine too much. It keeps me within and away, even when you're drowning in the middle of it all. It's strange, these times we've lived in and lived through, the fact we still even exist gives testament to an unbroken glory, a glory that has carried our excellence into boardrooms and barbershops, kitchens and arenas, cane fields and white houses. A global pandemic magnifies the racism embedded into policing and governance and corporate prerogative. A global pandemic inspires a worldwide assertion that the lives and souls and bodies of black folk are just as valuable as anyone else. It inspires the feeling that the age-old promises of change may actually be enforced. But then we're reminded of the depth of powers whose entire agenda is established to thrive upon our exploitation, of the depth of the plight and the twisted psyches which survive generational trauma, of the depth of everyday harm that we commit upon each other and ourselves due to an eerie lack of value that we march and riot for. Is it possible to fight a battle on this many fronts and expect victory? What can motivate our weakest links to do the work against our oppression, or at the very least, not actively work against it? The last one yet is a uh, man children. There's an incurable turmoil that comes with black manhood. You are deemed inferior yet overwhelming threat wherever you may be found. You are conditioned to place value in absent-minded ambitions, depreciating pursuits, empty fulfillments, the latest sneakers, the most sex partners, the cleanest whip and iciest chain, the biggest name on the yard or block or court or field, you are conditioned through mass media programming, public policy, and the barriers to exposure that your worth is arbitrary. You're conditioned to believe not only are emotions for the weak, they are deadly, they will get you killed, they make you less than a man, they make you a female. We hate women. More and more, that's the way it appears and feels and is. We hate women. But our hate doesn't stop there. This hatred seeps into how we see or don't. Another man with our same skin. This hatred seeps into how we view ourselves. We are conditioned to believe we have no meaning, no history, no future, no promise of greatness, unless it's balling, rapping, or hustling. If we can't make it in those boxes, who are we? When we make it in those boxes, who are we? There are many small, scared little boys who occupy the dangerous bodies of men. I walked by a group of these little boys outside of a popular Chinese restaurant. They were laughing and dancing and eaten, and before they could reach the apex of their joy, they were surrounded by squad cars. They did not run away or hide illegal contraband or get aggressive. They simply looked on as every other nearby witness on that humid summer day. The officers were swift to confront the boys and make clear their presence was not appreciated and they needed to disband and go home. It's a free country, one of the boys said through his black mouth covering, a gold dollar sign imprinted front and center. Loitering is not a freedom, one of the cops said. You can remove yourself or you can be removed. We're paying customers. What loitering are we doing? Nah, homie, let's just go. Let's just go. Shit's not working. 
hey, yo, dead ass, shit's not worth it, let's be out. With reluctance and animosity and defeat, the boys step away. Onlookers who were filming the interaction stop recording. The cops linger for some time before patrolling another corner, policing another group of melanated bodies. Later that night, on my return home, I see a young lady with appealing features. Her eyes are bright and curious. Her hair is healthy and curly. Her skin radiates even in the darkness. Her body <coughs> is strong and full. Her focus is on the toddler by her side, tying his shoestrings. The sky cracks open with a colorful blast of professional fireworks. The toddler looks up and is amazed. The young lady looks up to see a man approach. A boy who occupies the body and age of a man approaches. He wears a black face covering with a dollar sign in the center. I remember his face and gait and muscles and skin, skin the color of mine as if we came from the same womb. Damn, mom, you dare wrong for coming out of the crib looking that good. His boys enjoy this interaction from their stoop, ready to revel in his failure. Hey, yo, mom, I know you hear me talking to you. I don't know you, and I'm not ever trying to get to know you. Before she can gather her belongings, her son, herself, it's already too late. The upset boy crosses the young lady's mouth with a hard smack. She is brought to her knees, eye level with her frightened son. The sting causes her to rub her face, making sure she can still feel. Blood trickles from her nose, leaving a red smear across her fingers. Stupid bitch, nobody want your ugly ass anyway. There's a gang of laughter from the stoop, the kind that starts in the stomach and travels miles into the air. I can hear their laughs as these words are being written. I can only imagine the depth of her pain and humiliation. I can only imagine because a woman has never slapped the taste out of my mouth because I declined to engage. An older woman parks her grocery basket between the boy and young lady. Behind her square glasses are the eyes of someone who has seen Many generations pass, and for every innovation, not much has changed. She reads into the boy's wild eyes. He scoffs down upon them and retreats to the safety of his comrades. Yo, why you have to violate Shorty, my guy? You're sick. The older woman pulls a napkin from her purse to give the young lady. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. She hurries to her feet and takes a deep look for the boy in the dollar sign mask. He's lost in the expanse of laughing bodies. Her son starts to bawl, filling the street with pain. It sinks with their laughter. Wait until the police get here, the older woman said. They'll take care of him. The young lady fixes her mask and our eyes lock. She puts her son over her shoulder and begins another way home. She broke my heart. 
and uh, we immediately became very fast friends. So it is my distinct honor to invite America Murphy to the stage with her tiny guitar. i 
I built a king Okay, ghost powder. 
A few clouds scowled the sky like pale fish over the river. The carousel on Pier 25 closes for the season. I waste my days courting puppets and chasing women. October turns out its empty pockets, squeezing the last glow from evening. The nation teeters on spindly hind legs. I almost lose it in a bureau of frustration. Baz and I swap jail stories at Howell. The pigeon lady quivers under feathers at Union Square. Catherine Bradford paints a pirate ship in my imagination. Another friend has struck. And the folks have a motto. Or the croak. Hyperion takes a hit. Surrounded by invisible naked ladies, I haunted alleyways of wrecked organdy, listening to Hytro Vila Lobos' fantasies. What I like is starter fluid on Bozo's grave. <laughs> Demand eternity, but settle for ecstasy. Malappropriation strategies for instance. Custard's last stand. 20,000 leaks under the sea. IOUs dripping from the sun's blind spot. What kind of fuel am I? My arms still brag about holding you up in nights watching the pair shop. Fire lost in your lips, I find abandoned. There are only green lights in the go town. Hopefully I 
I was going to have you go last, Jeff, but you know, sometimes people leave, and I, I, it's so important to me that people hear that. So, taking the mood of the evening, I felt it was best for you to go and win. Okay, so our next performer is a prolific filmmaker, playwright, musician. He's collaborated with everybody from Mark Ronson to Sean Lennon. He's made four feature films, two off-Broadway plays, many albums, and it is my honor to introduce my old friend, Jordan Gallen.
like an old horse on a new race course. I've been falling behind and feeling out of sorts. And a little out of step, wondering what moves I got left. Like an old dancer doing his last pirouette.
Thank you, Jordan. Fantastic, per usual. Just a quick note, if you are performing this evening, we're gonna take a group shot at the end of the performances. And if you contributed to Lonesome, we are also gonna take a group shot. So stick around at the end. So our last poet of the night, it's fair to say represents the new New York school. He is kind of a downtown legend at this point. He hosts an extremely popular open mic, the cult following called Easy Paradise, every Monday at the KGB Red Room. It is my distinct honor to introduce Matt Proctor. to be a part of Lonesome and this esteemed company, this incredible magazine. I feel like I'm in Purple Magazine. My, my dreams have come true. Thank you, this, I cannot it's wait for this. No, it's gonna be incredible, it's gonna be like, it's gonna, well, yeah, but it's gonna be like one of those $40 magazines. You know, I've never been in, that's, that's, that's where I wanna be. It's a hardcover book. Exactly, exactly, that's quality, I know it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read all stuff that I wasn't gonna read, I guess. I'm gonna, I just want to read this. I have to read this. This is um, January 17th. This is from my new book, War Commercial. I make these, yes, thank you. Um, yes, thank you. I make these zines. This is my new one. I don't have any copies yet. I mean, this is an ARC copy. This is an advanced review copy. So I'm still in the editing process. But um, this is Chinese Democracy, which is a Guns N' Roses album. That took like 10 years. It took forever. It's like a legendarily delayed album. Chinese Democracy. It's, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. At punk rock karaoke, everybody sang Guns N' Roses, the tattoo artists and heroin addicts, except John Ryan Dobbs, our childhood friend in the Navy, fighting the global war on terror as an air traffic controller on the Ike, who either sang Secret Agent Man by Johnny Rivers, you know it, or fucking hostile by Pantera. They had dollar pictures, and brand representatives were on hand to give you a free pack of camels if you let them scan your driver's license. We didn't smoke, but JR did, so he'd use ours to get more cigarettes. He vomited in the backyard while smoking, then picked a french fry out of the mess and re-ate it. Rat Boy was aghast. I know, people, people who look like dancing were horrified. But we were proud. That was our friend, downing double captain and cokes at Thunder Jackson's, puking on the side of Tommy's minivan all the way home. I just had to read that. I didn't want to read that for There's some Avalon fans in the crowd. Just say. I would love I just, it's done at work. You do your thing. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Matt did write a poem about Avalon. Yes, I, I would, I would, I would have brought it, but this is I'm walking here. This is dedicated to Avalon, the amazing, we love Avalon, an amazing teacher and artist. We made a collage together with chalk. It was incredible. I'm walking here. Vocal cords are very fine, thinner than hair. The Skywalker Ranch doesn't have any horses. Smoke weed in the rooftop farm at Rosemary's. Bob Harris snowing on Christmas from our window mistakenly perpendicular to the ghost cruise, which appeared when we talked about it. Sofia Coppola was whisked away from our bookmark, the Mark Jacobs bookstore, and a black Mercedes Benz. I had virgin suicides on DVD in college. One of the world's great filmmakers brings a bustling uproar to the corner of Bleecker and West 11th. Put it on my undergrad credit card. I'm not flying premium economy. I'm walking here, making it in New York. We're combining screenplays, 
Learner of the OK Human feels like an auto reply. MCR fanfic, romance novel fanfic, coffee mayhem. Everybody wore these glasses 10 years ago. The laundromat always stops at my grandma's house. Fair evasion in the territories soon. Minus Eek the Cat, Ram Jam, ESL Mezzanine, Shielding Coxcomb, Medley, Pheasant Placard Marble Set. That long tunnel rests for the weekend. I'm achievable, down to size, getting booster shot, fondling crack cocaine, methodically disappointed. I pass this way a lot of my beat. Live one third of my life on the shoulder of the road, hazards on. You need to see what you've made three nights a week, nightclub, mega university, growing, hulking bar curriculum, selling beer. We use it for a school, turn it sideways, mixed up files. We sleep in the museum, sideways stories from Wayside School, camping out in the Met and the Natural History Museum across the park, slung in hammock to the Seneca trees, iron clanging as we punctured the befogged chrome towers. Medieval drawbridge levers us down into the teeming nape of the plain. Polyhedonists rollicking, romping, masks of the phantasm. Joseph Papp, Nicky Hopkins, Margaret Yang, secreting notations. I want the pillow with the boat on it. From the mixed up files of Ashley D. Escobar, Shake Shack Flanner. To prevent stealing Starbucks pre order, strawberry banana almond milk smoothie, walking pterodactyl ducks, debriefing Cuomoville, and para Halloween decorative greeter crinkle fries. I can't smoke inside. I'm trying to control my life. Who's going to stop me? You and what army? <laughs> Just do one more, just one more. Thank you, uh, thank you, Monique. Thank, give it up for Monique. Can we just get a round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. So this is about a reading that we did over Christmas in this very room, actually. Uh, 1223. Screen fasting. So my poems are all one big poem. I know that's the most pretentious thing in the, in, in the world to say, but my poems are commercials for life, okay? And in a time of war, they're commercial. My mom wanted me to go to law school and I had an epiphany today. I am a lawyer. <laughs> I, you're, you are a lawyer, you know. You passed the bar exam. That's fucking up in That's right. We are lawyers. We are lawyers on behalf of beauty. In life. I'll swear you in. Hell yeah. What did she say? I'll swear you in. <laughs> New York, New York. JD, here it comes. Alright. So this is screen fasting. The final argument. Screen fasting. All is quiet on New Year's Day. Ready for a break. We get more of the same. Experiencing Christmas where there is no Christmas. Torching my brand. We celebrated these children in the library. Doing good deed for the season. If you're bad to people, they're bad to you. Nothing seems to be working. I got three thousand dollars in a check from United Healthcare to fix myself, so I guess I should start. I should not have let it get this far. If you're thinking about someone, they're thinking about you. That's what I learned today. I need to last just one more week watching directors round tables. This is me if you care. I'm scared of my family. I wish I could be there in person. Bread, pork loin, chicken wrapped in bacon. Now I know what he meant by that's not food. What am I going to say to everybody? Having directed over 2,000 TV commercials, sort of a DSLR Michael Bay, 
listening to Quentin Tarantino on Brett Easton Ellis podcast, watching Mark Marin on TikTok, editing my live streams for reels, uploading the SD cards from my past. He's voice detecting fembots at 3 a.m., half Jewish, half Muslim, doesn't really celebrate Christmas, which is kind of a relief. I remember when my friend Amin came to Columbus for one day on Christmas 2012. His disgust with our family's consumerism, television addiction, the disregard with which suburban Americans live. You have to have a job for that. As things get more privatized and financialized, cashless transactions mark your geolocation. 38 and still holding on. A show business cockroach surviving a nuclear holocaust of no grandchildren. It's Halloween on Christmas Eve. I'm doing what always made me happy. I like big notebooks and having lots of things thrown at me at once. I'm teaching a class January 18th in diary poetics. How taking things one step at a time can lead to massive success as an artist. <laughs> 38 is the prime of life, but I just turned 39. We're all leaves on a tree. It's beautiful what we make when we fall. our last performer, I have a question for you guys, and it's, would you like me to read along? Yeah. So in a packed room like this, there's really only one poem that I'm going to read, because my baby's here, or was just here, and it's a poem about her called Avalon. A beach in New Jersey, a Roxy Music album, a Toyota, a mythical legend, a mythical island of Arthurian legend, our little soul come down to earth. For all the hours it took to cross the bridge of worlds and reel her in, a kite, a rainbow fish of stars, my sun, her twinkling light bright against the universal dark, she danced through time and space into the closed circle of my arms. Hello. Again. In the months preceding her arrival, we affectionately called her little soul. Upon receiving my thank you note, my sister-in-law asks, Is that a name I see? Saul? Is that what the kids do these days? Name little girls after old Jewish men? <laughs> Raising a daughter is tricky business, but at least we're not in Texas or Alabama. Arkansas, the Dakotas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Ohio, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi. Did I leave any of those motherfuckers out? <laughs> Saul, the son, first daughter born to your family in generations. On holidays, she's a little jewel in a sea of men. I had hoped for a boy who would love me fiercely and destroy my house. I feared the karmic weight of mothers and daughters, her ridicule, my acrimony. It's easy to say break the cycle, but nearly impossible to change. My fingernails dig deep into stone and come back bloody. Almost the minute we confirmed my pregnancy, her mother had a stroke. Ellen passed ten days later, she and Avalon floating past each other, soundless as ships at midnight, passing ancestral histories, genetic code, every secret spinning a golden thread, anchoring Avalon to this world, sending Ellen on to the next. The first time I entered Ellen's house on Farview Avenue, Paramus, New Jersey, she said that the first one to have a daughter wins. Now the baby and I pass her portrait on the steps down to the basement, and Avalon, still young enough to hold universes in her palm, nods in recognition. Your grandmother loves you, I say, as a tingling featherweight brush along my shoulder blades. 
replies in kind. Out on the deck, Avalon plays at my feet. Her brother, the black cat, teaches her the joy of shredding paper towel. She is deep in concentration, her little tongue peeking from the corner of her mouth. The red cardinal, our frequent companion, keeps watch. There is a noise overhead, a hawk, or maybe the resident owl. Avalon looks up at me wearing your mother's face. We drive to Jersey in the rain. Just over the GWB, I begin reciting Ginsburg's cottage. There has been talk of keeping Avalon from the cemetery, an old Jewish custom you scoff at, but your aunt riding with us confirms that she, age five, did not attend her own mother's service. Parked in the cemetery, I curl myself around my baby, bare-breasted in the passenger seat, casting a shield, chanting a mantra, only those in agreement with this soul's highest and best may enter. What is motherhood, if not madness, stretched to the brink of what is possible, tracing the edges of the cosmos, drawing strength from our elders' elders, learning as we go? Your mother, what's left of her now underground, had little patience for such things alive. Now she weaves the protection spell alongside me. Motherhood makes witches of us all. Thank you guys. Yeah. So Yes, 
I'm in a 
Vegas. I said, so you're the guy with all the dots. And he said, no, that's the rock. <laughs> then the lights grew low. The air sparkled with dust. He said, we're only here to do what we must. Just remember, not every calling has a caller. Then he grabbed my arm and his voice turned to ice. He said, nobody ever gets to do this twice. So listen now, what I'm telling you, this is all but a painting of shadows and shapes and blue. Let it seem for a moment he drifted away. Then he came out of it, and I heard him say, But all, you know, all will be well. Listen to the stories. I was one of the very few 
you to travel around the world for you out of the mountain into the rain over the ocean and back again but it's just a routine search for you i travel the high road i travel the low i travel to places nobody should go i spend a little time out in no man's land just another stop along the lack of a plan but it's just a routine search for you there's no doubt you laugh about my search i know you do but if i ever find my only real life love you'll know my love is you Thinking my thinking, blowing my horn Thinking of how to get over the wall Blowing my horn like a mating call But it's just a routine search for you It's just a routine search for you circulating so do hit that and then uh, really quickly I want to invite up the contributors to Lonesome so we can all pose for a photo so I'm just going to start on the top America Murphy everybody Anthony Ray
take them home? Uh, the We're leaving in the morning. That's Matt. Well, I give them to the homeless. I know, I know, I know. Here, Catherine. Should I take a box, honey? Or should I give it to your friends? Yeah, take a box.